Well, meanwhile, a prominent Syria blogger has posted footage allegedly showing chemical weapons being used by radical rebels. Let's get the details now from our correspondent Paul Scott here live in the studio. Paul, what do we know about this, uh, this footage? Well, the videos have appeared on the website of uh, a prominent blogger who goes by the name of Brown Moses. Now, he's been focusing on the Syrian conflict for, for the last couple of years, analysing uh, uh, claims and counterclaims that have been emerging from the, the two-year civil war. Now, he's been sent a link to three videos which apparently show a chemical weapons attack being carried out by opposition forces. The videos apparently were found on the mobile phone of a terrorist who was killed recently on the Kurdish border. And you can see in the, uh, the footage now that... Uh, the people carrying out the alleged attack are wearing gas masks, uh, they're firing shells and rockets, and uh, their weapons are draped in extremist paraphernalia. Now, the videos were dated August the 21st, which is, of course, the, uh, the same date of the chemical weapons attack that recently featured in the UN report, the chemical weapons attack that led President Obama to say that a red line had been crossed. Now, Brown Moses, on his blog, has continually been trying to decipher, really, all the information coming out of this conflict. And his decision to publish these videos, which suggest it could well be opposition forces who are carrying out chemical weapons attack, and really open up the debate once more as a sign, I suppose, that the information war is going to carry on as long as the, the ground war. Well, it is interesting stuff, isn't it? I mean, what are the, the theories about where the rebels could have acquired these, uh, these chemical weapons, if indeed this is, this is correct? Well, if it turns out to be true and that the, the opposition have indeed used these chemical weapons, then one theory is that um, the, the sarin was, uh, came from Iraq via Turkey. Now, you'll remember in May there were reports uh, coming out of the Turkish press suggesting that a, a two-kilogram cylinder of sarin gas was discovered in the homes of uh, Syrian opposition rebels connected with al-Qaeda through the al-Nusra front. Uh, now, at the time, Russia called for an investigation into those uh, reports, but uh, Turkey, Ankara, actually denied that, uh, that the reports were true and said that no, uh, no such weapons had been found. But former CIA analyst uh, Michael Malouf explains uh, that that is indeed a possibility. I have a... Uh a report uh, from uh, a source who has direct uh, connections with uh, uh, to, to classified information, and he basically told me that uh, the U.S. military did an assessment based upon 50 indicators that, and, and clandestine uh, interviews that the sourcing of uh, sarin uh, originated out of uh, Iraq and into Turkey uh, before uh, some of it was confiscated uh, in May in Turkey and uh, that uh, there has actually been a, a more significant amount of uh, sarin production, uh, both in Iraq and in Turkey, going to the, uh, going to the opposition, uh, principally al-Qaeda. And we've had separate reports now uh, that uh, al-Qaeda uh, elements are uh, rather significant numbers uh, and, have, uh, and now have permeated into the opposition. So the, the ability to be able to uh, uh, distinguish who gets what and where is, is, makes it much more problematic for this administration. Well, we've heard what he's had to say about that. I mean, it's a potentially game-changing uh, situation. Quite dramatic stuff, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, we, we've seen over the last few weeks that diplomacy is, is beginning to, to have an effect. Diplomacy is, uh, is set to continue, and it looks as if the information war is going to rumble along alongside it. It will indeed. OK, Artie's Paul Scott, thanks very much for that.